So this is an exciting time at Central Washington University's geology department. We have a brand new professor. Her name is Hannah Shamlu, and I'd like you to meet her with this little video. She's teaching volcanology for some of our undergraduates and graduate students. Let's visit with Hannah this afternoon. Her. Well, volcanology is my thing. Yeah. I'm more from the igneous realm uh, in terms of looking at crystals and magma and figuring out what the crystals are telling us. Right. So I'm interpreting crystals. Volcanology is all encompassing. So it looks at crystals, but it's also looking at physical stuff that's happening on the surface. So mm -hmm. that's not my expertise, but I'm certainly adjacent to it. So I've been learning a lot as this class goes too. Oh, well, I've just been so impressed with the vibe you have in the room. And oh, thanks. It <laughs> seems like you've been at it forever, but you... Oh, wow. Well, you I gotta give credit to the students. They're talking a bunch. <laughs> They're very fun. Definitely keep me entertained, so. So not that long ago, you were working on your PhD dissertation, I assume. What That's was right. your What was your topic, and are you using any of that in your course that you're teaching this spring? Yeah, certainly. So. My PhD was all about what in a magma chamber causes it to become unstable enough to erupt. Okay. What are those processes and how long does that take? Mm -hmm. So the tool I use is these little crystals that form in magma chambers. And these crystals have basically a fingerprint that we can decipher and yeah. tell us what triggered this eruption, what's the time required to trigger the eruption. So that's my expertise. I looked a lot at Yellowstone super volcano. Uh -huh. We're not supposed to call it super volcano. We're not. It's a volcano capable of super eruptions. Oh my god. But it is not a super volcano. Oh, I, got, I, I missed that memo somehow. <laughs> that's, gotta, a, that's a new memo. I gotta go through my email. I slip up too. <laughs> but yeah, so I looked a lot at Yellowstone Caldera's most recent super eruption that created the Lava Creek Tuff. And my research shows that it only takes a few years to tip that scale from non-eruptible to eruptible. Seriously, okay. Yeah. So pretty exciting for a super eruption. So sometimes people kind of say, well, that was a fun project and now I'm gonna start teaching yeah. and I'm gonna go in a totally different direction. Now, are you gonna take some of that work you were doing with the dissertation and just keep going with the crystal uh, size distribution thing? I dig the crystal. So I <laughs> may, I'm moving a little away from Yellowstone. I'll always love Yellowstone, probably will continue Yellowstone in the future, but right yeah. now I'm trying to look at backyard geology, so I'm going to be working on Mount Baker. Smart. Yeah, smart. Get a little more familiar with the Washington geology, and so I'll be working on that in collaboration with Sue Dabari and Christina Wolowski at Western Washington. So that's already set up? You that's, have some sort of collaboration already? Yeah, we got a grant funded recently to study the volcanics at Mount Baker. So I have some grad students set up. I'm going to have some undergrads working on this stuff oh with God. me. For, it's a really cool collaboration. It's going to be fun. So the grad students that are coming to work with you this fall, they already know about this project? Oh, yeah. Like part <laughs> They of the were stoked. Okay, <laughs> yeah. good. That's kind of my selling point. Is like, we have this sweet project. I need someone to help me with this. Come learn about crystals and how we can interpret them to figure out what triggers baker eruptions and how long does that take. Well, I mean, that's tremendously exciting for a bunch of reasons, yeah. including the fact that you're going to use Washington geology. I just oh, love I'm excited. that. Yeah. Um, do you have a sense of how much field work you'll be doing this summer then? And would yeah. the, grad, the new grad students be involved right away this summer? I would like the new grad students to be involved, but the truth is we have to get to the field in July. So that's uh, before our grad students come. Yeah. Um, and field work's actually kind of light. Go to Mount Baker, you bring a spatula, and you scrape off some ash. <laughs> Pick up a rock, it's a lava rock, and you're kind of done. Okay. Other people have done a phenomenal job mapping that volcano. Yeah. We just don't really know a lot about the pre-eruptive history. Okay. And that's what we're kind of filling it in. So you're, so, so I don't know, how do you do, what's your label? Like, you're not, uh, are you an igneous <laughs> petrologist? Are you, uh, yeah, well. yeah, I... I'm trained as I should an know this. We hired you. Hannah. I mean, I should know this. I, <laughs> I was trained as an igneous petrologist, but I work on volcanic problems. Okay. But volcanologists can encompass so many things, like people who look, again, at these physical proce processes that happen on the surface. Right. I don't do that. Yeah. I care about what's happening in the magma chamber beneath the volcano Got it. before it goes boom. 
So if it's if it's light on the field work, as you say, then it's yes. heavy on the what? What do you visualize Ooh. with your grad students here? It's, so it's more heavy on the analytical side. Okay. So my grad students will be in the lab, uh, basically dissecting these crystals, mm -hmm. looking at their guts, their chemical guts, and okay. reading the clues on what these crystals experienced in that magma chamber and the time signature with that. And that's a process you did learn when that Yellowstone work. That's right, okay. that's right. So they'll be using our awesome instruments in the Murdoch lab here that can look at the chemistry of individual crystals. They'll be modeling using code that I've written to figure out how much time is associated with those chemical oh, signatures. Wow. Um, I'm focusing on the grad students, but I really want to focus on the undergrads and, yeah. and, and how often they'll see you in class and research opportunities that they might have with you, similar to, to Susan, let's say. So which classes do, for undergrads do you visualize teaching uh, regularly in the next decade? Mm. Okay, so my regular classes will be rocks and minerals. Okay. So it's a 300 level course that all our majors have to take. Yeah. So that's their introduction to rocks and minerals. So all the stuff that I care about and how we read that for processes that happen in magma. Mm -hmm. So that's my staple. I teach volcanology every other year in the spring. Yep. I'm teaching a new seminar this fall called Volcano, or Living with Volcanoes. Yeah. That's a very chill two credit class. We come <laughs> read a paper, we discuss what's going on in the field as of now. Yeah. And we just have a conversation about it. Nice. And then... And so there might be some opportunities for the undergrads to learn mm. the inner workings of your lab, I hope oh, so. certainly, yeah. certainly. I am actually looking for, I have one graduate student, we're gonna start working together in the, f oh. sorry, one undergraduate, we're gonna start working together in the summer. Okay and she will be looking at those crystals. So she'll be picking crystals out of ash from a Mount Baker eruption. But I'm also gonna need students to help me set up my lab. So I just got here and I'm building a small experimental lab. Oh, can we see it? You can see like what it will, <laughs> we can see the empty parts okay. <laughs> that will change into a lab. All right. So the whole point of this lab is to create a melting zone. So we're getting a special furnace mm. that allows us to melt rock. So it reaches high temperatures. We don't have high pressure. There's no pressure component. Okay. But we have high temperatures and we have gas mixing capabilities. Uh -huh. So this is special because you can mimic the conditions of a magma chamber. Yeah. So this is a lab that you that you're designing based on what you did at Oregon State and also Arizona State. And Arizona State, yeah. yeah. So this will be the chives lab. Chives, clever. Did you come up with this? I did. So Center for High Temperature Volcanic and Experimental Studies. You can see the onions growing out of the volcanoes. <laughs> really wanted it to be cheese lab. Uh, couldn't make the acronym couldn't. work. <laughs> Chives are the second best, I'd uh -huh. say, to cheese. Oh, you even got an official little plate here. Excellent. Yes. Okay. So right now it's just a uh, office space. You are. <laughs> we're, we're seeing the before. This we're going to see an after, like five years from now. I'll come in. Hopefully we'll by the end of the summer. Okay. Okay. So yeah, this will kind of be just a zone for the graduate students to work. Yeah. Um, this is probably we'll have our meetings to discuss what's going on. Okay. And then this will be the special access zone. Uh, Again, yes. it's just an office. Right. But you'll imagine there'll be some countertops. There'll be some special furnaces to melt stuff. The furnaces will be in here. They will be in here. Okay. So you have to be trained to enter this room. Right. Eventually. Yes. But right now it's just office. Okay. So furnaces and I'm sorry, you maybe already just said it. What, what other kind of lab equipment or is this like a prep area for the furnace or? So the prep the area will be in there too. Okay. Uh, so what we do is we make tiny little magma chambers. Okay. So we would take precious metal like platinum, gold. You shape it into a tiny little cauldron. Yeah. You fill it with a very fine grain powder. That powder could be a natural rock that we've smushed really well. Ah. Or it could be a mixture that we've made synthetically okay. so you take pure element oxide so all the ingredients that make up magma yeah you can buy them 
in their purest forms, you can combine them in some proportion, I like see. like baking a cake. Right. So different right. ingredients for a cake. Huh. So you put that in your little precious metal thing, you put it in the furnace, and you heat it up, and it melts, and then you figure out what's going on. So With, eventually that'll happen. Again. Yes. <laughs> and so then, are, am I visualizing your students like? Uh, hunched over a microscope day after day. Yeah, microscope. They'll be on a little step ladder inserting uh, a sample into a very tall furnace. I'm getting the, the visual now. Get the visual. The See, visual. we already have our step ladder. <laughs> that's a, that's we don't have much. We have you, step you got a poster on the on the on the we door, and you. <laughs> this is a little TIG welder. Okay. Not set up either. All right. But that jewelers use this, and that's to weld our precious metal capsules. Okay. So something will come. It's well, just not yes. quite there. Well, you've been just, you know, you've been teaching like crazy. Lots so of teaching, and this whole place needs to be renovated. Well, at least that room needs to be renovated to oh. host special right. electric capabilities and okay. gas. And okay. Yeah, things need to happen first. And and rock cabinets and rock This eventually samples. will be storage. Yeah. It's empty now. Okay. All right. But Mount Baker rocks will live here. Excellent. Yeah. Well, if you got just a couple more minutes, um, can we get from here down to where you're teaching volcanology? We'll just peek yes. our head in, maybe. Let's go let's, look at the classroom. Let's take the uh, scenic route, okay. shall we? Yes. And we're trying to encourage people to come into this building. You know, yeah, this it's a beautiful been like building. A, coming out of this last two years, we're like trying to get back to real life around here. So <laughs> this is a, this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, so. Are you building the volcanology class almost week to week, like you're writing lectures as you're walking in the door kind of a thing, or has it been pretty much I'm a little more out? ahead than that, I g in, but sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yes and no. Right. In December, I put some stuff together. Uh, I wrote a syllabus just so I knew the direction of the class, mm -hmm. and then, yes, kind of week by week is yeah. when I really have the vision of what I want to say. So. Well, that style you have, I mean, I, I'd love to get it on camera, but I don't want to be intrusive, so <laughs> I guess I won't. But it's just such a natural... Uh, well, thank you, Nick. <laughs> the vibe in that room has just been so terrific. And it yeah, is nice it just, people talk to me in the class. <laughs> well, totally. Maybe right. too much. I think I'd tell them to Maybe shut the hell up half much. the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, can we even do a little bit more light? Yeah, yeah so are you, so you're set up for this afternoon. Oh, yeah. is, is so this Josh, part of your lab? Josh is our TA. He always okay. does a great job of coming in here beforehand and setting up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this week we're talking all about volcanics that happen more explosively. So we've got some things like ignimbrites. These result from really fast density currents that happen at the, on the side of a volcano. Mm -hmm. And they just deposit and they got all this stuff in there and these little pumice clasts get squished. You can see these little stringy guys? Yep. Those were once inflated like these clasts. So uh, see this guy? Yeah. He used to look like that. But then he got buried and got squished while he was still hot. So he turned into a little fiame is what we call it. Got it. Uh, we got all sorts of stuff. This is a bread crust bomb. This is pretty cool. So this is something you can imagine when a volcano explodes, it's flying through the air, it's still hot. Yep. Gas is expanding in the center. Okay. This expansion causes the brittle crust that's forming, because it's cooling quickly, mm -hmm. to actually start cracking. So if you've ever made a loaf of bread, or like a round loaf of bread, the same thing happens. That's why we call it bread crust. This is a classic piece of obsidian, one of my favorites. This is just volcanic glass in its purest form. Isn't that beautiful? It is it beautiful. It fractures with these weird circular conchoidal is what we call it. Mm -hmm. So you were teaching about different kinds of uh, processes and deposits this morning, like ignobrites yeah. and other things. Is there a natural tie with what you were doing this morning with what these guys are doing this afternoon? I try to make that tie. That's a good it's thing. It's not always seamless, but yes, I try to. Kay. So today we actually talked about, here's what you're going to see in lab. Right. Here's the processes that happen to yeah. get to something like this. Yeah. So by the time they see these things, hopefully, they're at least familiar with what's going on. Well, hopefully they're, they've all taken rocks and minerals. They've that all too. taken mineralogy, et cetera. So what will so be the process? That we all, I might bounce in and just film a little bit with them working. But sure. what are the, what are the, what's the uh, action item or two for them this afternoon with these samples? Well, this is probably the coolest thing. This is a sequence of rocks. This is from our former 
a volcanologist, Wendy Borson. Mm -hmm. So these are sampled from the Bishop Tuff, okay. which is an explosive eruption that happened at the Long Valley Caldera in California. Mm -hmm. So this kind of represents a classic sequence of rocks we would expect yeah. for an explosive eruption like this. Yeah. So the students are going to look at them in order and try to figure out what each layer represents I through see. time of the eruption. We have these really awesome cabinets. So I've tried to organize everything by lab. This was lab four. There's some associated papers I've printed out. Mm -hmm. This is more um, Hawaiian style stuff. Sure. So we've already gone through this. You're thinking of doing a Hawaii field trip, right? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Love to see you there. <laughs> uh, let's see. So again, this is by lab three. This okay. is already done. We had some thin sections with that one. Oh, so you are using thin sections a little bit in Just this course. Just once. Okay. Just once. Yep. Okay. Hopefully introduce more. Yep. But yeah. So cool. I try to organize things by week. It's not always perfect. There's also some random stuff in here. I don't know who it belongs to, but. Well, I mean, each time you teach the course, of course, it's going to be better and better. You're, it's That's just, the goal. You're just trying to get through <laughs> the <laughs> first time. Just almost, trying to survive you know? right now. <laughs> We're in survivor mode. <laughs> yep, OK. All right. All right, hold Another on. room. More rocks. This is another storage equipment okay. room. So this is kind of our zone. Again, former volcanologist here, Wendy, bought all these really cool viscometers. So these are devices the students can study different viscosities of different materials. So think of peanut butter viscosity versus water. One flows much slower than the other. So that's what we're kind of, we're trying to cement into the students' minds by looking at different viscosities. Geez, I didn't know we had those. Are you, have you used them yet? Yeah, we used them week, a couple weeks ago. They're what, pretty cool. What did you throw in there? So they stay as is. The yeah. center chamber has just a clear liquid with a fixed viscosity. Okay. It's slightly different than this one, which is slightly different than that one. Yeah. So they have to literally measure the amount of time it takes. I don't know if you can see this steel ball. Mm -hmm. They measure the amount of time it takes for this steel ball to fall through this liquid. Hmm. And then they can convert that time into a viscosity with specific math. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So you can imagine the longer time it takes, the more viscous the material is. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a little flower caldera. You are organized. I like it. I like, I like it. It's got to be. Know, I know that handwriting already here. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, look at you've even labeled this. Yeah, uh -oh. that's a caldera. We're going to talk about this on Wednesday. Okay. So this is very simple. It's just a tube, a little uh, balloon pump, and there's a balloon attached to the other end of this tube buried in this flower. So the point is we start with relatively flat ground. Okay. But as we inject magma into our crust. Oh my god. So that's are you ser oh my are you serious? <laughs> I gotta zoom in. This is the real deal. This is so this is a magma chamber basically inflating. It's be becoming injected with more and more material. Yeah. So you can see our ground is deforming. Yep. So we have volcanologists who are studying this ground deformation at all times at active volcanoes. Okay. Now, if we release that amount of magma or we get an eruption. Oh, did you I miss it? I'm not. <laughs> Can we do it again? We took it. <laughs> <laughs> God dang it. I should have given you warning. Oh, what an amateur film off videographer. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, we'll take, take yeah. two. <laughs> Injecting our magma chamber with Good. magma. Yep. We're getting ground deformation. I got it. Our volcanologists got are it. studying yeah. this ground deformation using satellites. Got it. Okay, once we get an eruption, we're releasing all that material. So right. I'm going to release the magma. Oh. And then we get this subsidence of crust, and that's what forms a caldera. So this is, this is what Yellowstone looks like. This is what Mount Mazama looks like, uh, Crater Lake in Oregon. Any depression that we call a volcano, but is like actually a depression in the ground instead of this conical thing, is a caldera. And that's how they form. Even Kilauea. Even Kilauea has a caldera. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. Wow. Yep, so that's just a fun little experiment. They're Easy peasy. Gonna, they're going to love that I on hope Wednesday. they do. I'm very allergic to flowers, so... <laughs> <laughs> a little miserable making this, but <laughs> fun nonetheless. What dedication. <laughs> Good Lord. You're no, it was super fun to make. So, yeah, this equipment room is where we keep all the fun stuff. So you had a vision, not, not to put you on the spot, but you, you, you accepted the job. We're thrilled that you took the job. Thrilled to be here. What, what has surprised you so far? 
I mean, you've been here less than six months. Yeah. Uh, about the students or about the facilities or like, you know, you had the image of what this was going to be, but yeah. what's the reality and how's it different? It's a lot of work. <laughs> it is a lot of I work. I knew it would be a lot of work. Yeah. I think the most surprising thing is just how at home I feel. Good. Like I, I definitely am where I need to be. Excellent. So yeah, I'm happy. Excellent. But being a first year professor is tough, <laughs> but worth it. Look at that, there's a geology major. Exactly. Um, yeah, well, you know, this pace isn't going to be like this. I hope. Definitely. <laughs> no, no, no. Eventually no, I'll figure out what no. I'm doing. <laughs> so. Well, you, you know that you're, that you're way impressive already. Well, who do we have here? This is my dog, Fuji. <laughs> Fuji. Named after a volcano in Japan. Hello, Fuji. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Hi, Fuji. Hi, Fuji. Good girl. Oh. Oh, That's a good stretch. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. Enjoy your lab this afternoon. Thank you. See you later. Fuji. Hi, Anna. How's it going? Welcome to our lab. Love it. We got this nice little cluster of students here working on some stuff. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> right. And nice. you're done. No. So what would you do with this sample here, Dan? Oh, uh, this one we had to describe how the um, the bread crust uh, bomb actually formed, mm -hmm. and then why we get the vesicles in it, and how we get these kind of cracks and fractures in it. Ever seen anything like that before? In every other petrology class. <laughs> 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 wow. Whoa, was that a That's a sick burn, Dan. It's <laughs> so one of the main ones. Never solicit. Uh, never forget. Never solicit. Mm -hmm. Would you mind? Just about. Oh. It's not as good as Tommy's. <laughs> I think it's better than Tommy's. I haven't even seen Tommy's yet. <laughs> no, trust me. It's so much better. Are you kidding? I mean, I mean, I still got to write that. Oh, okay. Tommy with the little shaded. Oh, Tommy. Put it on the bottom. The input. 10.4. Intriguing that you said 10.4. Is it? Well, I also you're looking at a, you're looking at a different <laughs> side that I am. So, so how is this different than rocks and minerals, you guys? You've all had rocks and minerals. So, like, how do these labs differ than than what you were doing there? Is it very similar? Yeah. We're looking at a a lot of similar samples. So for rocks and minerals, we looked at like all yeah, rocks so yeah. versus there was one week in rocks and men's where it was specifically volcanic product. Uh -huh. So take that one week in rocks and men's and that's what the entirety of this corridor for volcanology has been. Makes sense. A little yes. more intense. Yes. A little more intense. How would you describe the intensity? Just the expectation, the uh, time it takes to do the labs? Not so much the time it takes. That's still super reasonable. But yeah. the expectation, we're supposed to you know, just know a little bit more about the processes and stuff instead of just physical yeah. descriptions and yeah. things of that sort. Yeah. More interpretation instead of just observation. Excellent. Well, it is 478. Come on now. Let's, true. let's go. True. We're, we're running out of numbers. We're almost, exactly. we're almost up to Zach's world. Good, Tim. How's it going? Good. Where's that sample from? Is it clear? This one is from the Bishop Tuff. Mm -hmm. We're trying to... There's layers that form in ignimbrite deposits. And all of these samples represent different layers from that ignimbrite. So we're kind of trying to look at characteristics, to try and decide where they are in the column. Like this one, you can see pieces of what were once lithic fragments, uh, pumice, mm -hmm. that because this was such a hot deposit and there was more material above it, got squished down into Almost things called fiamme. 
Fiamme. <laughs> We've been saying Fiamme a lot. <laughs> so you seem to know where you are in the in the column, huh? Ah, uh, I think so. I think number I'm, six. This is number. <laughs> no, this is number five. Oh. So it's Near one the above the bottom. Nice. Got it. There we go. Nice. Gals, what we got going here? Oh, it's obsidian. Look at obsidian. Mm -hmm. Mm. Is that related to this column Do you thing? Obsidian and I don't think so. Okay. No, just All right. Yeah, it doesn't say where these ones come from. Just the obsidian. What actually talking about the difference between the crystals and the um, So this is no crystals. And I am preparing for another class. <laughs> Multitasking. <laughs> Multitasking at its finest. You know, I know so little about these ignimbrites, but I know that's what you were working on uh, at Yellowstone. Oh, I could show you, actually. Yeah, let's There's do it. There's a vial of ash from that eruption. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is actually from Yellowstone's most recent super eruption. Uh, you can see, so this is ash. This is the stuff that f flies into the air when we have our explosive eruption. So it's a big okay. column. We call yeah. it a Plinian column. And then eventually this stuff kind of rains down and we get this nice unconsolidated ash. It's thick. Pretty coarse. Very yeah. coarse. These are crystals. So okay. you can see the crystals in the ash. It's pretty incredible. Can you see the shiny stuff? Yeah. So yeah, so I would then take an individual crystal, multiple crystals, and slice them open, study their chemistry. There's a whole world in these crystals. So it's just the distance from the source? Like if, if we went 500 miles away from Yellowstone, it would be the fine ash that we're all familiar with? The finer stuff will definitely travel farther, and it'll also just be much thinner layers of ash for sure. Yeah. But in this eruption, we just have big crystals coming out of the magnetic. So you're not hoping to find big crystals like that with Baker, are you? Or are you? With Baker's ash. I mean, you haven't really been up. I haven't seen it yet, but like, yeah, we could. What the hell? I've never seen that Pretty kind gorgeous. of coarse. So this is probably what you're used to. Well, sure. More fine grain powder. Now, huh. there might be crystals in here. They're just so tiny. Would you mind getting some of those bigger crystals out, just sure. like in, in the palm of your hand or something? Sure. Like I'm, I'm really blown away by that. I know. These, so these are did basically you, quartz and feldspar. Did you say this is airfall? This is airfall. So you can see the quartz are pretty cool. They actually look like little diamonds. Here's a good one right here. Do you see? So I will say this ash, I washed it. It's usually much dirtier okay. so I just ran it through some water let it dry and you can I mean that's enough to, sh to separate whole crystals from just chunks of glass did you sample this personally in the I field did, yeah I sampled this. were you in the caldera were you like outside the caldera so we like were, 50 miles we or? were out directly outside of the park okay outside the caldera um, yeah just a little outcrop near the outside of the park this is the lava which which eruption is this this is the most recent super eruption 631,000 years ago that produced the lava creek tuff. lava creek yeah well i gotta confess when we walked on campus an hour ago like i wasn't you kept talking about crystals, but I was like visualizing crystals in like an ignimbrite or something. But yeah. they're like loose airfall crystals. Loose airfall. I try to avoid ignimbrites. Reason Why? being because when they deposit, they're still hot. So it totally resets. It can really mess up the magmatic history that these things record. It can kind of, as they continue to cool, it can kind of tell us a secondary history that we don't really want to know about. Wow. We want to know about what happened right before eruption, not after eruption. We have these Piedmont's rollers. So yeah, I like ash. R and R. If possible. Very cool. Thank you. Usually didn't want to receive because it was like a ten dollar rental or something like that. But I didn't realize it was spelled P E A G. So then think about how these different flows would behave. Well, that one be way more viscous because it's got Exactly, so it'd be much more sluggish. Okay, that's it. Okay. Yeah. 
Are you the guys that were in Geology 351 last spring? <laughs> yeah. I thought I recognized you guys. part of that crew. Look at us, Best actual geologists ever. now. Thank you. Fucking Celestia, huh? Well, you own that dog too, don't you? I do. That is also my dog, <laughs> Fuji. So Jordan, Carrie, it's exciting to have you here as well. What are you teaching this spring? This spring, I'm teaching intro, okay. intro to geology. Yep. So f I'll probably be doing that into the future. So if you're coming here doing intro to geology, I'll be the one of me and Nick tag teaming. Yeah, that's it. Um, Let's check out your classroom here. Yeah. Yeah. What was, oh, and I'm also teaching a, a class over in environmental studies, oh, uh, energy and society. Okay, so you and Hannah came together, and you guys were in Corvallis the previous year. Yeah, we were in Corvallis. She was doing her postdoc there. And you got your master's in geology where? UC Davis. Okay, what thesis did you do, Jordan? Good. I flew drones Yeah. Um, over a landslide in La Honda, California, um, basically as the landslide was kind of occurring. So I did like periodic drone flights. Mm -hmm. um, and basically with that we were able to, you know, I did maybe one every two weeks or so and we were able to track the motion of the land side through time um, over a El Nino winter there in 2016 or 2017. Excellent. Um, yeah, and we were able to track it through time, track displacements, uh, calculate volumes of the landslide, and unfortunately some houses oh. got destroyed in that landslide really? slowly but surely. So have you gotten to your landslide unit yet in your Geology 101? And Not. Will you, will you use some of your work maybe in the, yeah. in the lecture? Yeah, so I did, uh, I did teach Earth's Changing Surface last quarter. Okay. And definitely had some photos of uh, some big cracks going through the middle of the house. Ah. Unfortunately for that homeowner, they chose to live on a landslide. So yeah, uh, showed some of those photos. Mm -hmm. um, that landslide was really cool because it was you know, not a super high speed, you know, high velocity landslide, but yep. but fast enough where we could see dramatic change on the course of days to weeks to months. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, um, your your gig here, at least as we see it right now, is more of a teaching kind Correct. of recruiting yes. thing, and not so much that research. You right. don't. You're which which is fine with me. Okay. Good. Do you, do you hope that you might be able to do some teaching in the field? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Teaching in the field is fun. That's where, that's where geology is happening. Where did you do your field, co uh, field camp or field courses that, that yeah. influenced you? I have taken a bunch of field courses. Uh, in undergrad, we went to, we did a week-long back tri backpacking trip in the Grand Canyon. Oh. We went to Death Valley, California. Yep. Um, we went to Hawaii. Huh. Which is one that we do here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that probably that Hannah will be teaching here in a couple of years That's or what so. I hear. That's, That's what, what I hear, hear. too. <laughs> um, and then also down in um, Owens Valley, I've TA'd the UC Davis Field Camp down there a handful of times. So it's kind of this set of skills where you're not only teaching geology, but from my point of view, you're kind of kind of modeling how you've taken your interesting geology and folded it into kind of your life. You know, you're out there in, in, in the fresh air on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah, I like to get outside. I feel like I've always liked being outside and geology was kind of a, a way to facilitate a, an education and then, you know, a career out of it. Yes. Out of trying to be outside. Yes. Um, you know, now I, I go outside for geology things and I also go outside because I like, you know, geology adjacent activities, right. whatnot, right. biking, hiking, yeah. all the all that good stuff. So without getting too personal, why did Ellensburg get on your radar screen? Like, did, did, did something about this area appeal to you guys? To be totally honest, not really. Um, I didn't know what we were getting into when we came to Ellensburg. <laughs> Washington as a state was pretty unknown to me. Yeah. Um, we'd been kind of, you know, all over the country, but slowly working our way to the PNW. And so far, I've been blown away by the landscapes here, the geology here. It's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, you may look at it on a map and, you know, it's kind of, it's got the ag fields, farm fields, similar mm -hmm. to maybe what I was used to back in the Midwest where I grew up. Yeah, yeah. But I tell you, you can hop on your bike, 
you can walk if you want and you can get to some really, really cool things. Really, it's e very easily accessible around here. Well, you were really impressed with that Leavenworth area, right? Oh, yeah. That, that canyon Beautiful you were up, up there. Uh, recently. So you're a big mountain bike guy. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I, I do think that the students that show up here, I think a majority of them are just not outdoors people. And so we're gunning for those folks who hmm at least are vaguely aware or we can drag them on a few field trips like like you've got in mind i think that's the way to do it for sure yeah yeah there's there's so much here and i mean yeah. i think the geology department you know from what i've seen you guys do or now we do a good job we, of, yeah. of getting people out there yeah. getting them to these close sites you know that are in our backyard and then yeah. as they progress through the major you can get further and further and deeper and deeper into the awesome geology around here and beyond that's my 10 minutes is up. You did a great job. Thrilled that you're here. Thrilled that Hannah's here. Thrilled to be here. Okay. It's great. All right. Well, thank you, George. Of course. All right. Well, everybody, that's another episode of Blue Skies and Geology in Discovery Hall. All right. Sweet. Okay. Is that all right? Is that good? Is that good? Perfect. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Thanks for being a good sport. You know, I try not to, obviously, I try not to plan these. I mean, <laughs> basically grab you out of the <laughs> office. By My me. dog ratted me out. <laughs>